water moccasin, cottonmouth, mangrove rattler, snapjaw. The world's only aquatic pit viper has a lot of different names and a very bad reputation. If you're warm-blooded, cottonmouths can find you in the dark. They bite once, inject their venom, and let go. Then they bide their time, tracking their prey until it dies. Sometimes they just wait for a pond to dry up, and then feast on small fish that can't get away. Researchers in Tennessee are hunting them. Lots of times in the slough, there'll be like root mounds, um, and a lot of them will rest on there to, to bask and whatnot, and we'll catch them. Um, occasionally we see them just, you know, cruising by, and we'll catch them in the water like that. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? <laughs> well, I'm out here trying to save these snakes. Scientists want to separate fact from fiction about this aquatic cousin to the rattlesnake. But unless you're a frog, their reputation for aggressiveness is really undeserved. Cottonmouths kind of get that reputation because they have such a fancy, you know, display. Right? When, they, when they feel confronted and they feel like they can't run, um, they're going to open their mouths, they're going to expose that white cotton mouth, which is where they get their name. And unlike other snakes, like racers or rat snakes, cottonmouths will hold their ground when threatened. About 8,000 poisonous snake bites are reported each year in the United States. But 90% of those are from rattlesnakes. Chances of dying are just one in 500. He's gorgeous, look how healthy he is. Researchers here have been tracking 60 snakes along an old railroad right of way that is now a nature trail. Five of the snakes have transmitters embedded under their skin to help locate them. He's gotta be right around here somewhere. There's, oh, get him, get him, get him. This is Necros, a three foot western cottonmouth who has grown four centimeters and gained 130 grams since July. It's now late October, and Necros was caught crossing the trail to reach Rocky Bluffs nearby. He will hibernate there all winter. Until the trail was paved four years ago, humans and snakes got along just fine. Now that it's been paved, because it generates such good heat, it, it's an attractor. And you do see cotton mouse and copperheads uh, up here sunning and getting warm and when I see families letting their children run ahead of them I, I always stop and say you need to keep them with you because they are present here there are poisonous snakes present on this trail with the shadows and the limbs that uh, come onto the trail sometimes you don't see them till you're right on top of them. Cottonmouths have not bitten anybody here but that hasn't kept people from killing them. Wildlife officials tell hikers to let them be. First thing they're going to do is run away from you. So, you know, just leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. Researchers will monitor the snakes during the winter with instruments they've planted inside their dens. Okay. Um, they may find a new answer to an old scientific question. Can two things, in this case humans and snakes, occupy the same space at the same time? For This American Land, I'm Gary Stryker.